And again, my mother prepared me for Martin Luther King Jr. She also then made it illogical and irrational for me to accept Martin's offer to join him. But that was, that was just the beginning of that experience. I started education in special education. We were, we were labeled educationally retarded. <laughs> they didn't call us that. The kids in Garfield Elementary School were labeled bluebirds, robins, and crows. And we had a, a picture of the little bird that we were. Guess who the cr crows were? We were the special ed kids. The crows had a room sandwiched between wood shop in the basement and, and home ec in, in, on the other side. We were destined to be nothing except a wasted efforts that would spend time in school until we got old enough to get a job. And believe me, I understood this. In our community, male and female children, you had 18 years at most if you were in a home. And when you turned 18, you either had graduated from high school with what, or, or not, but you were going to get out of the house and get a job. And if you didn't get out of the house, you are going to pay rent because people had to survive. Well, I was fortunate. No, I was blessed, to be honest. Special education. The special ed teacher somehow just liked me. Now, liking me was not an easy chore. I was, I was such a delinquent till I organized a little gang. We controlled the east door of Garfield Elementary School, and all of the kids going in had to pay me five or ten cents, depending on what my needs were that week. <laughs> and if they didn't, uh, the big guys working for me would beat them up. I was a hoodlum. And the special ed teacher liked me. I guess she liked me because I, I had an there was an attitude about me. If I, if I didn't like something, I would say it, and if I couldn't win the argument, I'd just shut down and stop talking. I was her challenge. I remember her, too. I remember the day that she asked me to stay after school. She said, George, sometimes you do well in my, in my class. You, you, you're, you're active, you participate, in, in, in you, and you're learning. Why, why don't you just really be a good student that you can be? And I said to her, why should I? I'm poor. I'm on welfare. I get one pair of jeans a year and one pair of shoes and some socks. I live in a segregated neighborhood. Why should I get a good education? I'll get a job or something, but I, education, I don't need that. And she said, it's true that you're poor. I can't do anything about that. It's true that you're black. I can't do anything about that either. It's true that you live in a racially segregated community, and I can't do anything about that, but you can do something about all of those things if you got a degree. First a diploma, and then a degree. She knew George Henderson. I responded, yeah, sure, tough stuff. And she said, she knew how to trigger me. I'm not too sure you can do any better. You want to get George, did you tell him what he can't do? Yeah. She pushed my button, and I said, I can. Ah, and then she says, no, I've given up on you. And I followed her out the door, says, please, please. And she says, okay. She took me home to my mother. Never forget that either. She said, Mrs. Henderson, George and I had a conversation, and he's going to try to be a better student. And my mother cried, and she said, thank you, Lord. I can still hear, thank you, Lord. Because my mother always wanted me to go to college, Tuskegee. She grew up near Tuskegee. She knew what a college was. My mother had the equivalent of a sixth or a seventh grade education, but she wanted me to go to Tuskegee to get a good education. And that, was, that made me feel good because my mother, my mother saw something that made her happy and heard something that made her happy. And let me say now, to set the record straight, all of my teachers from kindergarten through, good gracious, 12 years of uh, elementary, secondary, four years of college, all of them were white. So the good, the bad, and the ugly were white people, and yet I dislike white people. And here was this thing, here was a special ed teacher. Ha! My mother agreed that I would stay 15 to 20 minutes uh, later, go to school 15 to 20 minutes earlier, and she worked with me and a couple of other kids. And at the end of the school year, we were learning. 
we were indeed getting this thing called an education. And then the other traumatic moment for me and turning point for me, really. At the end of the school year, she took me to Miss Gosh, the principal. Miss Gosh and I were on very good terms because as a leader with the Liquid Gang, she uh, <laughs> had me in the office periodically to... Uh, you were a regular. To, to, uh, <laughs> encourage me to do better with that panel that she put on my rear. So Miss Gosh laughed and said, do you want me to beat him now or later? Miss Johnson said, none of those things, uh, Miss Gosh. I want George Henderson retested. And she was holding my hand. And Miss Gosh didn't respond, and I, 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 I remember this also. Miss Johnson said, if George isn't retested, I'm not coming back to Garfield next year. I thought she was smart until I heard her say that. And gosh, I looked up at her. He, she's risking her, her career for me? No, it wasn't for me. She, I found out later she could have gone anywhere. She was one of the smartest, brightest teachers in the East Chicago Public Schools, but she chose us. There are stories within stories and within stories of all of us. And her story was this. I found out after graduating why she worked with some of us. She said to me, oh gosh, before I was going to college, she, uh, she took me out to buy a Coke and a hamburger. She said, George, I'm a minor, M-I-N-E-R. And my job is to find gems in schools like Garfield Elementary and to polish them and to dig them out and then let them go on and, and, and be successes. Wow. That was my Miss Johnson. Miss Gosh says, okay, I will retest him. And if, and if he fails, you won't have to worry about coming back. Long story short, I tested out of special education, one of the first, and went on to become a member of the National Honor Society. It was there. She knew it. She got it out of me. She worked me. She, no shortcuts for her. Either you did the work or you didn't, and she would give honest evaluations, and I learned, and, that's, and that then set the pattern for my academic studies. No shortcuts for George. Don't give me something that I didn't earn, but when I earn it, give it to me. I'll close there and then fast forward. High school, I don't know how in the world she did it. My mother couldn't attend because she had a job that she had to go, and my father also was getting extra hours. So I, my graduate, high school graduation, I had no one representing me there. Uh, none of my relatives uh, came. They just routinely didn't go to things like that because they didn't have many graduations. The H's were seated in the last row, and how Miss Johnson pulled that off, I do not know. So I thought, this thing is all messed up. Something's wrong. The H's should be up there in the middle somewhere. I'm going to be sitting here and one of the last ones to walk across that stage. And Miss Johnson had her seat directly behind mine. Oh, that woman. And just before Henderson, George, was called, she kneeled over behind me and she whispered in my ear, this little light of mine, now it's time for him to shine. Go shine, George. And she sat back and smiled. That was my graduation present. A person who believed in me, who helped me to gain the educational skills that I needed, and never gave up on me. So why did I hate white people? Just without even knowing them? Because that's what we did in those days. We were taught to dislike people that we didn't know if they were either a threat to us or had something that we wanted. I wasn't a threat to her. I had knowledge. I had a potential. And she got it out of me. And she asked for nothing except that I perform. But why did I hate white people? Because that was how I survived, I was told. I could have survived another way. My mother told me a long time ago, you don't have to fight people to, to make friends, George. But it would take me many years to understand that. This episode is presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, uh, sharing Oklahoma stories through its people since 1929. They, they do a fantastic job, and I, it's an honor to be partnered with them. So please go follow them on Instagram at Oklahoma Hall of Fame. And then for anything, their events, go to their website, um, www.oklahomahalloffame.com. Thanks for listening, and part two is coming next week. Cheers. <laughs>